So my name is Matthew Tate. I'm one of the brain tumor surgeons here in the Malnati Brain Tumor Institute, and I'm also director of the low-grade glioma program within the institute. I would say the most innovative procedure that I do in my practice, at least routinely, is uh, awake brain mapping. Um, I think we've become uh, much more adept at, at being able to identify critical regions of the brain as they relate to the tumors that we're trying to remove so that we can do that more safely. The brain mapping is a little bit of a more general term, and so I would say that that encompasses a broader range of things that we do to see where function might be localized in the brain. That could, that could be, you know, an MRI itself, a functional MRI. The most um, widely used and probably the gold standard uh, currently to determine if an area is really critical is to, is to identify that during stimulation uh, in the operating room where we apply a small current to an area of the brain and, and that'll tell us what the consequence of removing that could be without actually removing it. And so it gives us a kind of a, um, a, a glimpse into whether that area is critical or not and then we can make a decision about removing that part of the brain if it's safe to do so. I would argue that the safest way to do brain surgery uh, from a neurologic perspective because you know now we're not guessing what what this area of the brain does but we can actually find out in real time. Awake brain mapping is a, a technique used at most you know major medical centers I think um, you know here, here at the Malnati Brain Institute we do a, well, a large volume uh, of awake brain surgery and also uh, for folks like myself who are very interested in kind of advancing the field we do some more innovative brain mapping protocols, so we're starting to look at not just the very kind of rudimentary brain functions, but some more complex things like cognition and memory. Another mapping strategy in the, um, is, is a, a newer technology called transcranial magnetic stimulation. And we have, a, we have that ca capacity here at, at, in the BTI, and wh what we're doing there is actually via a large magnet, we're actually stimulating the brain electrically like we do in the operating room, but this we can do just in, a, in the office, in the clinic space, um, and with the same idea as we, we are interrogating different regions of the brain non-invasively, and then we can uh, use it for mapping of primarily movement and language at this point. We're trying to understand, or, or trying to expand that to other uh, neurologic functions as well, but that's kind of the main thing it's used for, for pre-surgical mapping, so, so that before we get in the operating room, we have some idea of where those critical regions might be allows us to do our kind of traditional mapping in the OR more efficiently. Well, generally, awake uh, stimulation of the brain is not painful. Um, it, that's what allows us to do the awake brain surgery. In fact, most of the pain from these procedures is from the, the scalp incision, frankly, or, or, or outside the brain. But once we're actually inside the brain, substance itself uh, usually does not generate pain. We typically look for you know, utilize this procedure for, you know, there's a number of factors. One is the patient themselves. Will they be able to tolerate the procedure? And, and most folks actually tolerate that just fine if we're, if it's, um, they understand exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it. And it's clearly expanding the patient like many things in medicine. Uh, if it's the unknown that's often the, the kind of anxiety provoking part. Um, so, so it's, you know, th that's from the patient perspective. And then, you know, generally, of course, we reserve it for those cases where the tumor's near functional areas, where we're most concerned about that. If the tumor's far away from a functional area, then we, we don't really need to do that, uh, or it's not as critical.